It feels like it's been over a thousand years since we last saw a certain character. And you all know which character I'm talking about. Kasai. It's been forever since we last seen him. And he is looking pretty fresh in Sozu. I'm going to say this now. He is looking freaking fresh and I love it. Episode 5 of Higurashi When They Cry Sozu. This might have been the Mion episode, but before we talk about Mion, let's talk a little bit about the other events in this episode that I just want to talk about a little bit. And the first thing I want to talk about is the extended curry seed that we saw at the beginning of this episode. Like, yes, we've always saw the majority of the big events that, you know, occur during the scene and go, but I still really enjoy just, you know, the extra length added to the scene this time, and we got to see more of what actually happened during the curry cooking competition that they did during class. I don't have too many comments to, you know, look into. Like, there's not a lot of things I really want to say about the scene, but I just really enjoyed seeing the curry cooking scene in its entirety. So the next scene I want to talk about is a scene we've I have seen multiple times before, for which, um, do I need to even explain what's going on in the scene? Like, you can see the images right here, right now. But, when I was watching the scene again, I got to thinking, why do we keep on seeing Rika's dance? Why is there a lot of focus on showing us Rika's dance multiple times? Now, I have a few ideas as to why we keep on seeing this. And the first idea, well, is a lazy idea, and say that, um, the reason why we keep on seeing the scene is Passion's way of cutting down on production time. Yeah, I don't like that theory, so I'm gonna, you know, act it out. But, another theory of mine that I have is, there's a lot more of a symbolic purpose as to why we're seeing Rika's ceremonial dance in every one of the Higurashi Go Sotu arcs. Now, we know that um, there is a lot of symbolism with Oyashiro-sama and Himizawa throughout the previous arcs of the original eight games, as well as Go. So, the reason why we keep on seeing Rika's ceremonial dance must come in a form of symbolism of, you know, the events that is to come in Sotsu, or the meanings behind these two new anime seasons, because there's multiple meanings to look into as to, you know, why Go and Sotsu is going on, and well, there's a lot of symbolism towards Orishiro-sama in these seasons as well, like I stated before. And, I have a feeling, the reason why we keep on seeing the dance has to do with the symbolism of the degrading of Orishiro-sama and the birth of a new one. Yes, throughout this entire show, we keep on seeing all the, you know, old details of the Orishiro-sama that we learned from the previous eight arcs being, you know, degraded and thrown away for a new, for a new Orishiro-sama to arrive with Satko. So I have a feeling the reason why we keep on seeing Rika's ceremonial dance is the final dance of life of the previous legend before it's rewritten by Ewa and Satko. That's why we keep on seeing the dance. It's a form of, you know, foreshadowing and symbolism of the death of the old Orishiro-sama and the upcoming birth of the new one. A different version than the one that we've grown used to. A changed version. And the big theme of Gon Sosu that I've noticed so far is the theme of change. And yes, before I move on to Mion, I have some comments I want to say about Mion, for which that's probably why the majority of you are watching this video. You want to hear me talk about Mion. But before I talk about Mion, I want to say a little bit about another character in this episode that I feel like I should make one or two statements on. <laughs> well, that's bold. That's really bold. He has balls! Oishi in this episode had freaking balls! He drove into the driveway of the Sorizaki residence in front of all the security cameras just to talk with Shion. That is really bold, Oishi. From all of what we know of 1983 Himizawa, the Sorizakis hated you. And yet, you still had the guts just to drive in front of their house, in their driveway, just to talk to Shion. And now, let's talk about Mion. And I'm gonna say this now. For the question of, who's the scariest person who's ever been afflicted with Himizawa Syndrome, right now, I'm gonna say that Mion is the scariest person who was afflicted by Himizawa Syndrome. Like, they're the scariest culprit, for the reasons of, she still has a little bit of, aware of awareness of what's going on. Now, a lot of the people who are affected with Himizawa Syndrome, they're kind of aware of what they're doing. But with Mion, it kind of feels like 
It's like an on and off sort of thing. Like, and there's moments where she's like in a trance, like we saw with the scene with Xion. She's like in a trance when she's attacking Xion. But then, after she killed Xion, the trance removes itself from her, and she realizes what she has just done, and feels deep regret for what she just did. And, my god, the scene, after she realized she just murdered Xion, that was heartbreaking. Because she knew she did it herself. And that scene just really hurts. Like, seeing Mion, the one character that has never been affected by Himizawa Syndrome, finally seeing her affected by Himizawa Syndrome, I'm gonna say this now. I regret ever wanting to see her affected with the Syndrome. I regret ever wanting to see her affected by the Syndrome. And yes, that definitely killed off my theory that um the person at the end of What's the Mashi Head was Shion. Yeah, that killed off my theory, but I don't mind. I don't mind that. Because I'm really liking seeing the Mion Culprit that we're seeing right here. And I have to say, the Mion Culprit is a lot different than the Shion Culprit. Like, the Shion we saw in Miyakashi, she's kind of more, you know, uh, what's a good way to describe Shion's uh, corporate style. It's a lot more erratic, a lot more, you know, um... Oh man, what's what's a good word? What's a good word to describe? Like, I don't want to use the word crazy. I don't want to use the word crazy. Yeah, I don't want to use that word. So what's a, what's a better word I could use? Um... It's like sporadic, like Shion's a little bit more sporadic and much more active as a culprit, while Mion, she's like the polar opposite of her twin sister. She is cold, and she is right to the point. And I'm gonna be honest here, Mion gave me goosebumps in the episode where she was interrogating, um, Shion. The scene right before she murdered Shion. That scene was freaking terrifying because Mion showed no fear. Especially when Xion, you know, zapped the taser right in front of her face, Beyond didn't flinch. For which gets me to wondering, who's the more scarier culprit? Beyond or Xion? That got that question popped in my head as I was watching that scene because I'm like, you know, in the original Mayakashi, I was never intimidated by Xion, but if I was ever in the position of being one of her victims, yeah, I would be kind of scared of Xion. But when I see Mion as a culprit, I'm thinking, you know what? I'll take Xion any day over you, Mion. You're freaky as a culprit. <laughs> but yes, um, Mion as a culprit is actually one of the most tragic culprits because she definitely knows what she's doing the whole time. Like, she's kind of, in a way, more consciously aware than every other culprit that we've seen. Like, yes, Rena is cold and calculated, but it gets to the point where you have to wonder how aware Rena is of what she's doing. And with Mion, She's constantly aware of what she's doing while, you know, she's affected by the Himizawa Syndrome. Even though there's moments where she's in a trance, she kind of seems to be breaking her trance multiple times. And we saw that in What's a Damashi when she locked up Keiichi. It seemed like she was still, you know, kind of conscious of what she's doing and not in the trance-like state when she was with Keiichi. And it's very interesting to see that. Like, I find everything about the Miyang culprit to be very interesting, like, I'm just scratching the surface of what we saw in this episode, like, you know, I want these videos to be short, so I won't be going further, I won't elaborate further on about the Mion Culprit, because I want these videos to be, you know, shorter, but I just find the Mion Culprit to be fascinating. She is so vastly different than every other culprit that we've seen in the series so far, and I want to talk more about her, but this video, I want to be short. So I'm ending my discussion about Culprit Mion right here, right now, and I want for you all to continue on the discussion down in the comments below. Okay, okay.